it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today. I am so excited because today is the reveal of the Simon Says Stamp and Lawn Fun Exclusive Christmas Like No Otter. Isn't this such a so cute? I adore these two otters together. I think they are so adorable. I'm going to be using them today in my card using the sentiment that says to my significant otters. This is a great card design for giving to someone really important in your life. There's also a bunch of other images included in this set that are perfect for a variety of different things such as friendship, holidays, Christmas, a lot of really things, neat things that you can do with this set. And I encourage you to check it out because this set is limited edition. So if you'd like to get it, you're going to want to head on over to the Simon Says Stamp shop and purchase it right away because they are only available in a limited quantity and once they sell out, they will be gone. So I encourage you to check it out. Now onto the card that we're going to be creating today. I wanted to use the two otters, as I mentioned, and that sentiment that says, to my significant otter. Isn't that just so adorable? I love puns. So I used the otters in this set, and I put them into a scene. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you how I created the scene. But then I also incorporated an interactive element to this card, and that is that the otters wobble. There's an action wobble attached to the otters, so that allows you to kind of tap on the otters and they wiggle around on the card. It's just really fun and a really great way to incorporate some interactive elements onto your card. So I'm going to share the details on how I created this card if you continue watching the video. And like I said, if you're interested in getting the Christmas Like No Otter stamp set, I do have the links down in the video description and there also are coordinating dies for the set as well. So let's head on over to my desk and see the stamp set in action and let's have some fun. So let me show you another close up look of this stamp set. I love the images in this set. They are so cute and I think having a close up look at them will be helpful for you in determining if you want to get this set. Now you can use this in a variety of different ways but like I said I'm going to be using the two otters together and make a really cute card that would be perfect to give for maybe your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, anybody that's really really important to you. So I'm stamping the otters onto some Bristol Smooth cardstock using some Simon Says Stamp Intense Black ink. Now normally I wouldn't be stamping onto Bristol paper, I would stamp onto Nina because I'm coloring with Copics. However, because the Bristol paper has a little bit different texture to it than the Nina paper, I chose this one in particular because I wanted the otters to have a little bit of a different texture. So I'm using E markers to color in this particular otter. Otters can be in a couple of different tones. They've got gray otters, black otters, there's a brownish, blackish colored otter. There's a variety of different ways you can color these. So I've chosen some of these E40 cut markers because they have more of a grayish tone to them. And I'm going to go ahead and color one of the otters with these and then the other one I'll color with warm grays. I'm only going to show you the coloring for one of the otters simply because I colored them exactly the same. But if you want the color combinations that I used for these images, I do have that listed over at my blog. So I encourage you to check that out. So the way I'm coloring these images is that I'm adding some really dark shading onto their bodies and then using a reddish tone in the center of both their face and their body to give them a little bit of a rosier tone. I think this really adds to the cuteness of the otters and if you look at otters in pictures, they have some different tones of coloring in different areas of their body. So I thought adding that R color, it's a really light R, I think that really just intensifies the look of the otters and gives them that really adorable cuteness to them. So I'm adding also some additional shading using the two darkest markers because as you color with the lighter colors, it kind of takes away from the darker tones. So that's why you're seeing me go back over top of the otter with the same darker colors a couple different times. And that's just so that I can get the shading the way I want it. Again, I'm bringing in more of those red tones. This time I'm using them on the feet of the otters and I'm also going to add some rosy cheeks. Again, this draws in the reddish tone that I added to the center of their faces and their bodies and again it really intensifies the look. So now that I've gone ahead and colored my otters I also colored in two of the logs and I colored in the hearts. Both the log and the hearts I colored very very simply so I didn't bother showing you the coloring of those and now I'm working on stamping the borders of my waves that are going to go in my scene. I die cut these using a lawn fawn border die and I'm using the wave stamp that's included in the Christmas Like No Otter stamp set to add some additional waves onto these panels. I'm using some white embossing powder to add those waves and I'm just melting that so that it pops off really nicely off of those blue cardstock borders. 
Now speaking of blue, there are two different sizes of these borders that I created. One's a little bit larger and that's the one that's going to go behind the shorter wave border. However, I wanted it to be slightly darker than the first wave border, so I'm going to go ahead and take a Copic marker and just add some coloring over top of that border. And you can see it just adds just a tiny bit more darker tone to it, so that way it gives the scene some dimension. I also die cut two clouds using the Lawn Fawn Puffy Cloud Border Die. You can see those there along the bottom right hand corner of my screen. I die cut those with some of the Bristol Smooth Paper to again match the whites that I'm using here. To build my scene, I'm starting off with a surf blue piece of cardstock that's going to serve as the background. This is going to be the sky. I die cut that using a memory box stitching border die, which are actually brand new, and I've really enjoyed using them so far. They're a really fun, wonky kind of stitch look, but a little bit different than some of the wonky stitch border dies that are out there. So I popped up my two borders, and I'm now working on taking the clouds and adding a little bit of shading using an end marker. You don't have to do this, but I really wanted to give the clouds just a little bit of extra dimension. So I added some little touches of gray in the corners where the clouds kind of look a little more puffy. And then I'm going to go ahead and tuck these behind the waves. I actually ended up deciding to add a little bit more interest to the clouds. After I added the second layer, because I did die cut two of these, I decided I wanted to add some separation between the front and back layer of clouds. So I'm going to go ahead and lift up that front layer and add some end marker behind that one, kind of extending out past the clouds. Then I'm going to take my Copic Zero marker and just softly go around those lines of color that I added there. And that's going to soften that harsh line and make it look like a shadow. So it really made those clouds look really dimensional and really cool. So to finish off my scene, I'm taking the logs and I'm gonna tuck these behind the waves. Now the reason I die cut two is because I wanted really one really big long log, but I didn't have that, so I went ahead and made two of them. And I'm going to layer these behind my otters. You are not going to notice that there's two of them because we're gonna layer the otters on top. Now what you're seeing me hold here is an action wobble. These are from Art Impressions and are really fun for incorporating in interactive elements onto your cards. These are the minis which fit behind your small stamped images perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and attach that down onto my otters. The plastic piece is the part that attaches down onto your card. So this is the hard plastic piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the adhesive backing and I'm going to tuck this behind the log. So I'm gonna be kind of careful as I'm shifting this behind the log, but as you can see here, I'm sticking it behind the log so that way it doesn't flatten the log out in any way and everything stays nice and level. You can see how that moves as you touch the otters and they wiggle around on the card. It's just so much fun. Now there's a bunch of cute sentiments in this stamp set that have a curved element to them and I wanted one on a banner. So I needed to cut a banner and unfortunately I lost the footage of this. But what I did was I took a piece of pink cardstock and die cut it with a circle die from Simon's Stamp. Then I die cut it again, shifting that circle up a little bit and then that created this curved banner shape. It was really, really easy. I'm sorry I don't have the footage of this. I just hope that you can understand what I did here in by taking those dies and die cutting with that edge of the circle twice just by shifting it up and that creating the banner. So I'm taking some white embossing powder and adding that on top of the sentiment that I stamped with some clear ink. Now I went ahead and cut both ends of this banner to have that really cute little fishtail banner end. However, I didn't end up needing to because I decided to go ahead and take the other end of the banner and tuck it behind the cloud. But if you wanted to go ahead and use that banner with both ends cut, you could definitely go ahead and do so. So my card is just about finished, but I wanted to add some more of that Bristol Smooth cardstock onto my card base and have some stitching detail on it. So I die cut another one of those memory box dies into some Bristol Smooth cardstock, and I'm gonna go ahead and attach that down onto my card base. This card base is from Nina Solar White cardstock. However, I wanted, again, like I said, to have that stitching detail on there, and I wanted the whites to match. So that's why I went ahead and added the Bristol paper on top of here. One more step, and that is to add some fun foam to the backside of my scene panel. You could totally skip this step, but I like adding dimension onto my cards. It's a lot of fun, and a card like this you'd be most likely hand delivering anyway. So adding all this extra dimension onto the card is not going to be a problem. So I went ahead and attached that down and you can see how adorable these images look in this cute little scene. And I just am in love with this stamp set from Lawn Fawn. I don't know who couldn't be in love with this set because it is just so adorable. 
So like I said, this stamp set is limited edition. So if you want to get it, I would really encourage you to head on over to the Simon Says Stamp Shop and go ahead and purchase it now because these sets sell out so quickly. And once they're gone, they're not coming back. So I have all of the links down in the video description below, or you can find them over at my blog. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I would hope you'd like to subscribe and see more videos from me because I have more September action coming all month long. Plus I post new videos every week, all the year long. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks so much for stopping by and spending some time with me today. I will see you again very soon. Bye.